Ready for part three? Here we go! Tip for 10 is commit yourself to your studies. Just like you do with all your other arrangements that you put in your schedule, schedule your English studies. Have them in your weekly schedule. So let's imagine um, on Monday I, I have a little gap from 5 to 5.30. Ah, I'll be studying English at this time. Then on Tuesday I have a gap from, I don't know, 10 to 10.30. Ah, so it's another opportunity for me to study English. You don't need to study for hours so that you have a result. It's something that is much more related to the continuity. Yeah, having that as part of your life, having that as part of a, a daily habit of yours. Yeah, just like you face your other arrangements that you have to, to commit to and honor them, you also have to honor your English studies. After all, you want to see results. You want to communicate in the language, don't you? So it takes a lot of commitment. Number 15 could be polemic as well. Do not speak like a native speaker. Speak like a good user of the language. Do you hear me? Speak like a good user of the language, please. Probably, as we know, English is a global language and you need to use it for work, for work-related reasons. You will probably talk to people from other nationalities. You'll be talking to French people, people from Germany, from India. Okay, you could well talk to Americans and, and British people, but it's a global language. After all, what we want is to establish communication. We need to solve problems. We need to reach consensus and agreements. And the language is a means for that. It's through the language that we do that. So don't worry so much about becoming a native speaker because chances are that's not going to happen. And it's OK. And it is OK. But we can, we can totally reach high levels of proficiency. OK? So always think about that. I want to be a good user of the English language. That's way different from being like a native speaker. Number right. 16, it's okay to have an accent. You see, it's actually part of your identity. It's who you are, so you have to own it. Of course, we do have to, to be careful uh, to pronounce things right. Uh, and there are a lot of things that we have to, to consider in terms of sounds. Um, word stress, sentence stress, intonation, as I said before, but accent is something else. It is okay. Number 17, do not panic. If you go blank, boom, you are at a meeting and then you simply forget a word that you, you have to say and then ah, you paralyze. Don't. First of all, breathe. It's all right. Smile. Also, this strategy, have some water, yeah? Why are you drinking? Think about how you could explain that word, how you could refer to that word that doesn't come to your mind. For instance, today, a student of mine needed to use the, the she wanted to use the word uncle, and she forgot the word uncle. So what she said was, ah, my mom's brother or the brother of my mother. Okay, I got the message. I, I got what it was. So it's a matter of practice. What I mean here is, although we want to be straightforward and we want to get straight to the point, sometimes it's not possible and some detours are possible, but still we get to the same place. Okay, so do not panic. Breathe. Ah, number 18. Going on an exchange program is not a guarantee of proficiency, okay? So do not blame it on the exchange program. Oh, it's because I've never done, I've never been in an exchange program. That's why I'm not proficient in the language. Not really, yeah? Because again, it has, it really has to do with your level of commitment to, to, to your studies. I know great speakers of the language, their teachers as well, and, uh, they hadn't been abroad before reaching great levels of proficiency. So do not trust this myth of 
you, I will only be able to speak English when I go abroad. It's not like that, okay? It's possible to learn and become proficient here in Brazil. Number 19 is you need to have hands-on practice. So it's quite interesting because I observe my students a lot and it's funny because when I ask them to repeat something or that there is a difficult word, there's a difficult pronunciation because there is, yeah? and then they just say, uh-huh, it's uh-uh. You have to say it because you think your brain captured the message, but then when it takes to activating that sound, ha ha, it's something else. So rather than just saying, uh-huh, please do say, do try and practice that certain sound your teacher is telling you, okay? Uh, because you will see that uh, when it gets here to your mouth and your, your muscles and tongue, mm, things could, could get twisted. And it's like yoga practice. At first you think, oh, I'll never be able to do that. But then you try it once, you try it twice, many, many times, and oh, I can pronounce it, okay? So trust the process and know uh -huh, pronounce it. Allow yourself. And tip 20. I think a word that I use here a lot is commitment. And yes, learning English, learning a language is a lifelong commitment. Are you ready for that? For you to keep it neat and nice, you need to be constantly exposed to it. Again, remember the gym example. It's not just about, okay, I'm, I'm going to work out, I'm going to the gym for a year and then I'm done. I'm never again going to the gym. I'm sorry, you won't keep the results that you've had in a year for the rest of your life. The same happens to English. So to ensure your English doesn't get rusty, you'd better keep it alive and active. And these are my 20 tips. However, if you have watched the video up to this point, bonus tip. And my bonus tip is, if you are an adult learner, do choose a professional, do choose an English teacher that has teaching qualifications. A native speaker of the English language is not a synonym of a good English teacher. A person who spent some time abroad in the US, in the UK, in South Africa is not a synonym of a good English teacher either. Do go for professionals who are committed, I really like this word, and who are committed to to the profession, to their learning, to their development, check which certificates they have, if they have a teaching experience, teaching qualifications, that's paramount. Because as you are investing your time, your expectations, money, you better have someone who is up to, to this challenge, right? So you have found this professional, you found a teacher with the qualifications, teaching experience, yada, yada, yada. Very well. Now, it's, now it's a moment for you to align your expectations, align your expectations, establish goals, be realistic, and my dear, enjoy the ride because it's totally worthwhile. All right, so that's it. These are my tips and I'd like to know the following. What is your favorite tip? Is there any tip you would like to share here with us? Please do that. And is there any topic that you would like me to talk more about? What is it? Please let me know. You can write down in the comments below and then subscribe, share, like. Yeah. Send your comments, nice comments. And that is it.